Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my FL Sun Super Racer mini review kind of thing. Um, this printer's been out for like a year or so. There's a lot of re good reviews on YouTube. I want to just kind of do a quick impressions mini review of the printer in stock form. Um, I'm not super interested in the printer in this form. I want to uh, do some upgrades to it and things like that and I'll, I'll do some more thorough videos once we start progressing with this printer a little bit. But I did want to do an initial review. Um, thank you to FL Sun for sending this to me for review. I'm super happy to be working with FL Sun. I do like a lot of their printers, um, especially this and the V400. So quick rundown on specs for this guy. It is a 260 by 260 by 330 build area printer. Deltas are generally very um, generous in the Z height, so that's a big plus for them. This printer is about $800 Canadian shipped. Um, shipping is a little expensive. Uh, I do appreciate that FL Sun has a Canadian warehouse, which is really nice, but shipping is still around $120. Um, it'd be nice if that could be um, a free shipping or cheaper or something like that. It does add to the cost of the printer. This is a Bowden printer out of the box, as most Deltas are. It has a uh, BMG clone extruder and a long Bowden tube there. It has, a, from what I can tell, a clone uh, Volcano hot end. And then it has two 4010 cooling fans for uh, tool head cooling. So pretty basic spec for a Delta. Um, I do like that it has linear rails out of the box. That is a great feature. Um, the frame is quite rigid. It's all pre-lubricated um, as far as like the ball joints and everything on the effector. Um, some pros of this printer are uh, it is as fast as they say it is. I know a lot of companies basically will tell their printers saying, oh, it prints at 250 millimeters a second or whatever. But that number doesn't mean anything when you don't have what acceleration is it running at? What, you know, what, what is 250 millimeters a second? And the outer walls, inner, is it just doing the infill at that speed? Um, I'm trying to get away from the, hey, my printer prints at 10,000 acceleration. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I want to translate stuff into a little bit more um, quantifiable, you know, speed difference versus just throwing out random numbers like, you know, how fast the head is moving and what acceleration it is, because that doesn't mean a whole lot. So unfortunately, I don't know what acceleration this printer is printing at. I do believe it's probably around 2000 to 5000. So much quicker than an Ender, of course, but still could probably go a little bit higher. Um, it is printing at 150 millimeters a second. Um, again, doesn't mean a whole lot because that's not 150 millimeters a second for every single perimeter, layer, all that kind of stuff. It's not doing 150 on top layers, for instance. So something that can help quantify something like that is, for instance, a Benchy. So here I have a Benchy that I printed out. This is uh, the newest version of Cura 5.3 and I took the FL Sun Super Racer uh, profile that's in there and I kind of just made some slight modifications to it. This printed in 34 minutes. So again, an Ender 3 would have printed this in like an hour and 15 or something like that. That is quantifiable difference, right? This is almost three times faster. So that's a bit more important to me than a bunch of random numbers. So yes, this printer 100% prints faster. The print looks very good. Um, I do have a little bit of blobbing on the parts. I don't 100% know if this is the fault of the hot end or the actual uh, Marlin or anything like that. Uh, I do know that print this printer does have power loss recovery on, which can cause blobbing on smaller models like this. I have tried to turn it off. I don't know if I was successful or not. We will see when we convert this printer over to Clipper. But um, everything is nice and sharp. Uh, the cooling is adequate. 
It definitely could be better. We'll go into that in a little bit. The cooling is adequate, um, but it does print uh, kind of as fast as it uh, say it does. It is much faster than a normal printer and even with Marlin on it. So it can only get better from here. So I do like that. Um, I printed out some, some other parts here. It, the printer is accurate. Um, I know deltas have gotten a bad rap in, in kind of early deltas of being inaccurate. Um, the printer is 100% accurate. There's no problems with accuracy. The layers are super clean. It, it is a very nice platform. So it prints well. It does print as fast as they say it does. It does have quite a nice touch screen. It's responsive. Um, it's a little bit annoying that it beeps all the time when you're pressing buttons and I don't think there's a way to turn that off. Uh, it does have a very nice bed with kind of like a texture like any cubic does. Um, it has like a little bit of a texture on the glass bed. It works very well. Everything sticks nice and well. Auto leveling works perfectly. I unboxed this printer. I assembled it. I did the auto leveling sequence and I had to dial in the Z height and it was perfect. My first layers are excellent. Um, and the printer is very easy to build. Uh, FL Sun did a great job. They have a great instruction manual. It's clear, color pictures, really nice steps. Uh, they test the printer from the factory. There was filament already in the hot ends. Um, very, very nice. They did a great job on that for sure. So those are the kind of pros of the printer. Um, there definitely are some cons. There's no such thing as a perfect printer, of course. So some cons that I have, at least in my mind, for deltas are the first thing um, being, so this uses linear rails and FL Sun has chosen to lubricate the linear rails with oil, which is not uh, the preference I would have went. Um, the oil actually is uh, leaked a little bit all on the top of the printer. So when I was assembling the printer, basically the tops of these uprights, there's a bunch of just oil that has trickled down from the linear rails. It's more of just a nuisance. Um, the rails should have just been pre-greased with actual grease, not oil. Um, so it does kind of make a bit of a mess. Again, not the end of the world. You can clean that all up with like um, isopropyl alcohol or whatever to get rid of the oil, um, degreaser, that type of thing. It's just uh, they should have been pre-greased with or they should have been lubricated with grease, not oil. Um, a little bit annoying. The fans on this printer are not loud, but they run excessively. Um, the printer is quiet, but it's also a little bit allowed at the same time, if that makes any sense. So a couple issues I have with this printer. Um, when you turn it on, there is a power supply fan and it is running. Now it is 100% audible. I don't like fan noise. Um, I would have preferred FL Sun to make this an AC bed, not a 24 volt bed. It seems, it seems as though it's an AC bed. Judging by the specs, it is a 300 watt power supply. So there's definitely plenty of room and a nice uh, closed up space in the bottom. They could have done an AC bed quite safely. They could have got rid, rid of the a power supply fan. So that's a little bit disappointing. I, I hate when a printer is just turned on and not doing anything and there's fans running. Um, it's an annoyance to me and most of my printers, I generally run uh, Meanwhile power supplies without fans or I run AC beds. So I don't have any fans spinning when the printer's sitting idle. So I don't like that. Um, the extruder, because it's Bowden and it does such fast retracts and such large retracts, the extruder is not necessarily loud, but you can hear it. Um, and it could be annoying for some if it's right next to you like it is for me. Um, so that could be alleviated by a direct drive setup, something like that. So I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, and then I'm not a huge fan of the 4010s uh, for tool head cooling. There's definitely room for 5015s on this printer. I wish FL Sun would have just went straight to 5015s. This printer is meant to print fast and people are gonna print PLA on this printer fast. So you should have all the cooling possible and they definitely could have put 5015s on here instead of the 4010s. So that's a little bit of disappointment, but again, 
for those uh, people who buy this printer and are into DIY and stuff like that, that's definitely um, remedied. And uh, this printer is, in my opinion, a bit too expensive, at least in Canada. Now, I don't know if it seems expensive in the U.S. or not. For me, this printer, like I say, shipped to my door is $800 Canadian. Um, it is a decent size printer. It is fast. It is well built. But for $800, um, there's definitely some other printers, you know, DIY printers or whatever that uh, I might be interested in. Um, I would have liked to see the at least free shipping or a little bit of, uh, especially seeing now they have the V400. It'd be nice to see this like discounted just slightly, um, make it a little bit cheaper and uh, make it a bit more affordable for people who wanted to get, to get into Deltas. Um, FL Sun, in my opinion, make some of the best Deltas out there. And they've definitely put a lot of time and effort into making sure they're good. So that's kind of my take on the uh, Super Racer. Um, I know the V400 is even more money, but it does run Clipper and it does have a lot of uh, upgraded features and stuff like that. So again, a little bit of, you know, annoying to me that it's so expensive. But I did want to show off one thing here just to kind of help people out who are new to deltas or maybe have heard um, in the past about, you know, deltas are not accurate, they can't do circles really well or all that kind of stuff. Um, I've definitely had deltas uh, way back in the day when that was the case. And uh, that's not true anymore. Modern firmware has definitely kind of fixed deltas and made them, you know, much more accurate and uh, better to use. So what I've kind of done to show that off is I've actually printed out a um, stealth burner tool head cover. And the best way I can show that the actual print is accurate is to show you how well or show you that a 5015 fan fits inside. So here I have a stealth burner, stealth burner tool head. It printed really, really nice. Again, other than the weird blobbing at retractions, again, which could be Marlin, it could be um, the hot end. We'll, we'll see when we start upgrading this printer. The first layer is absolutely excellent. And the 5015 in here fits perfectly. Um, I haven't cleaned this part up, so there's like a little lever here, if you can see that, which does need to actuate a bit. So it, it might take a, a moment or two for it to like get in there but it's not because it's not accurate. And this is this fits absolutely perfectly. So del modern delters are 100% accurate and suitable for printing out mechanical parts and things like that. So um, I think a big disadvantage of deltas is they're a little bit harder to enclose. Now, this delta, it does have easy access to kind of flat portions on the uprights. So you could potentially put on some like acrylic side panels or something like that, I'm sure. If you did want to enclose in print ABS or you can just put like a cover over top or whatever you want if you do want to print ABS on this. But um, yeah, so that kind of wraps up at least the review portion of the Super Racer. Uh, I do like a lot of things about it. It's um, the motion system is very nice. They put a lot of effort into it. It's easy to assemble. Uh, I think it could be a little bit cheaper. Um, what I plan on doing with this printer is the very first thing I'm going to be doing is putting clipper on this printer. I want more control over the printer. I want control over the acceleration. Um, I want to be able to run input shaper on this, that kind of thing. I want to change some parts on this printer and uh, clipper or clipper makes that much more accessible. So what I'm actually doing is I have, fortunately, I have a Creality Sonic Pad for review, which supports the FL Sun printers. For some reason, they chose to support those, which is great. I know FL Sun does have their own tablet for putting clipper on printers, and I would, of course, recommend doing that first. I just happen to have a Sonic Pad, and it just makes it my life easier to put clipper on this. Normally, I would use my clipper laptop, and I would put clipper on there using that, but I already have a Sonic Pad and it's nice so that this printer can be standalone and have its own screen down on the bottom and I can kind of show it off a little better for YouTube. So the first thing I'm doing is in part two of this, we're gonna put Clipper on this and I'm gonna compare the print quality. I'm gonna print out the exact same items that I printed um, with it with Marlin. We'll see if 
the blobbing is gone or anything like that. And we'll see what kind of improvements there are to the printer. So I'm very excited about that. And then I think as a part three, I'm thinking about putting on a different effector. So I'll just kind of come up close here a little bit to the effector so people can see a little bit better. Like I talked about in my review, there's a couple things I want to change on this is I want to go with 5015 fans. I plan on doing uh, potentially much faster prints on this printer, so I want better cooling. So there are quite a few tool heads or effectors on Thingiverse for the Super Racer, which is great. You can kind of pick and choose what you'd like. So I'm going to most likely grab a effector that I like that has most of the things that I want and I might do some quick modifications on it because um, I want to put 5015 fans on the printer. So that's the first thing I'm going to do to the effector. I also, I'm not really a big fan of the Volcano. Um, it's just, it's kind of an outdated design. It's inefficient in my opinion. And like with any of my printers, I would prefer to go to like a ceramic heated hot end. So I might look at doing something like that. I will have to make some modified um, ducting and such, or I might go with like a CHC Pro, which is a little bit longer. Um, the CHC, a normal CHC hot end would probably flow just as fast as this did, but it would be a little bit shorter and I'd have to modify some ducting and stuff like that. So I'm trying to toy around with ideas on that one. And then I probably want to go direct drive on this printer just to quiet down those retractions and make it a little bit usable for me. So those are kind of the stages I'm going to be doing is the next video, it's going to be a clipper installation. We'll kind of compare the print quality and stuff like that. We'll go over some details for, for everyone who's interested in putting clipper on a Delta or something like that. And then part three or the third stage will be kind of finding and tuning it up a factor that I want and make this printer even better. So, Again, thanks everyone for watching. Um, the channel's still growing, which is just incredible. I do have an awesome Delta channel on my Discord. So if you're interested in Deltas, definitely join my Discord. Go in there, um, ask questions. There's people building custom, crazy custom Delta printers. Um, there's, there's really awesome um, people on the Delta channel. And uh, I'd like to see some more people get into deltas. Uh, I definitely going to be experimenting more this year with my own designs. So um, this is not the only delta content that's going to be on my channel. Definitely stay tuned. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.